Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to My Deep Guide. And in today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. You all know that I am a big fan of the Supernote A6X2. I didn't expect it to be what it is, but it definitely delivered quite a lot of stuff. And since I've gotten it, um, yeah, I've been using it pretty much all of the time. And it's started to replace all of my writing needs, even from the Note Air 3C. Not all, but majority of them, simply because it's so powerful, so portable, so easy to use. And with the auto flip and everything, it's just a really, really well balanced and a joyful device to use. However, nothing is perfect, so I wanted to create a dedicated video about top 5 things that I like the least on the A6X2. So let's head on. Alright, so my first critique of the A6X2 would be the occasionally disappearing writing strokes. Now, um, this is very hard to replicate but I will try to write a bit and see if it happens. So far nothing. Okay, let me try the other pen if that... Okay, so sometimes I was able to reproduce it almost like exactly happening, uh, but I have rebooted it since. So I think that it kind of cleared out its memory thing. But the, the one thing that I noticed is that when it does happen, it basically you're writing and your stroke disappears. And if it starts happening, it can, it can happen quite often. So first, first things first, how do you get, uh, how do you remedy that? Well, you just swipe up and you refresh and your strokes are there. So basically it's just that the refreshing of the strokes is kind of bugged. Now, why was I squiggling these lines? Well, because what I noticed was that when I was writing and if I would hold my hand on the, uh, on the side swiper here, that I would actually uh, have a much better chance of getting that thing to to occur. So that's what I was attempting to do here with those squiggles. But no, it doesn't. It doesn't happen. So um, what I've also noticed is that when I was in that situation where I could reproduce that kind of that I write a stroke, my palm is resting on this uh, stripe here and then it always disappeared that I could actually do this because of the auto rotation that the Supernote A6X has. When I flipped it around and it's perfectly symmetrical, everything's the same. My power button is here. That's it. The functionality of these guys is smart. They're flipped as well. But then I noticed that I couldn't no longer reproduce that bug at all when writing um, yeah, with, with the Supernote A6X2 flipped upside down. So if you are experiencing that disappearing bug, a disappearing strokes bug, well, how do you get your strokes back? As I said, you refresh it. How do you attempt to maybe uh, get better results? Flip the device upside down so that the power button and the USB is actually facing you and then use it that way and see if that actually helps. But overall, this is not something that should be happening at all. Um, we've already had one update from uh, Supernote and this hasn't been fixed yet. And I think that they should definitely prioritize this because it is a regularly occurring bug and it's something that needs to be fixed. My second not favorite thing about the A6X2 would be the way how it handles pinch to zoom. And it's both on the speed and the way it actually works. I am able to get precise results only because I've trained myself. So now I can make the pinch to zoom actually look really easy to use and good. Uh, but that's only because I've been using this for quite a long time and I've trained my fingers here. But normally you don't, what people normally do try to do because you're coming from an iPad or a smartphone, which is 60 hertz per second and super responsive, you just pinch and then you kind of 
uh, pan the page so it fits where you want. You can't do that effectively on uh, the super note. So first of all, pinch is super slow. And second of all, this uh, panning, yes, you can do with two fingers, but it's unbelievably slow. However, there is a way around it until they find a way to kind of fix and improve this. And that is to actually understand how the pinch to zoom works on the A6X2. And it is uh, screen relative. It, it actually takes into account where you pinch to zoom. And then it will try to zoom in that area of the screen, which is normal. That's how pinch to zoom sh should work. But we normally don't use it like that. So if you try and use it like that on the A6X2 and you stick to it and you use it for, let's say, two weeks, you make an active effort. I absolutely promise you that it's going to become a second nature and that you will be able to zoom in exactly where you want and you will be able to center it around exactly how much you want. And I've trained that because uh, zooming is one of the key functionalities that you need in the MDO, which is what I'm showing here. And basically, I always use it for this one. So the other thing that I would also mention is people sometimes try to zoom in diagonally. That's not going to give you the best results. The best results with most precision you're going to get with the uh, vertical zooming so that your fingers are like this and then you kind of zoom in and then you will get it. it and still, it's not going to be perfect. Oh, that's but after a while, there we go. You can zoom in, you can zoom in a little bit further and then you write and that's it. I still don't like the way that works. It feels too fiddly. It feels too slow. So my preference actually for my deep guide at least is or my daily organizer is simply to flip it into the uh, landscape mode and then just fill things in because then the size is perfectly adequate. My next gripe with the A6X2 is, or A6X as, or A6 Supernote as a platform basically generally, is the fact that there's no pinch to zoom. There's in fact, there's no zooming at all um, for on, on the notebooks. So sometimes you want to be able to maybe zoom into an area, write smaller hand print and things like that, and then kind of zoom out and at least have some level of control, but there's no option for that at all. However, here as well, because of the um, yeah the, the the landscape format and the uh, accelerometer in the A6X2, you can simply flip it to uh, to the landscape format, and then the actual uh, you can pan by using the two fingers and they are switching to, you see, A2 mode while you're interacting. And when you red go, it refreshes here. So that makes it very, very responsive um, yeah, to actually use. Now, if they are able to do this in notebooks, uh, dynamically switching to the refresh mode and doing this, I don't see why they can't improve and implement the same thing in the pinch to zoom in the documents themselves. Um, yeah, and if you do have ghosting, well, you simply refresh and that's it. The fourth thing that I believe is, um, yeah, kind of a bad side uh, with the Supernote A6X2 is the location and the placement of the micro SD card slot, especially for the crystal version, because that means that you need to deal with the whole shebang of opening device up and, you know, back up and down just to access the micro SD card slot. This is a little bit less so on the A6X2 that's non-crystal, but even there you need to have that tool handy so that you can prop it up and then you can open it and things like that. So it is uh, unnecessarily cumbersome and that's something to yeah, keep in mind. And the final thing that I think is off with the A6X2 is the price. The base price ranges from low 400s to high 400s, even 500 US dollars. And that's before you add shipping and import costs into the picture. And that means that if you're not in one of the countries that has that can actually have the uh, Supernote delivered to you without the import tax, you're kind of looking at like 600 plus, maybe 650 bucks for a device that is A6 uh, that you can't try out in a store and things like that. So that is a massive amount of money for a digital notebook taking device. And that's something that's 
definitely is, yeah, a thing that you have to keep in mind when considering the A6X2. All right, so that was the list of five things that I like the least on the A6X2. And after that, I'm gonna be making a video of my top five favorite uh, features of the A6X2. Now, please let me know in the comments down below if you own an A6X2 or if you're considering it or something like that. What are your top five least favorite things about this device and what are your top five favorite things as well, maybe? Or maybe you can leave that for the next video. I don't know. Either way, I thought that this was an interesting thing to kind of do, to provide some kind of a balancing thing because it's easy to get carried away with this device and because it is so, so good. But in the name of objectivity, it is very, very important to address the negative aspects as well and put a certain as accent on them especially if some of them can actually be fixed and thankfully the majority of these things can be fixed via the software updates so hopefully that's something that we see in the future of the supernote a6x2 thank you so much for watching stay safe stay healthy and see you in the next video bye